Welcome to the Journal. Our country wonders this weekend what is on President Obama's mind. He's apparently about to bring months of deliberation to a close and answer General Stanley McChrystal's request for more troops in Afghanistan. When he finally announces how many, why, and at what cost, he will most likely have defined his presidency, for the consequences will be far-reaching and unpredictable. As I read and listen and wait with all of you for answers, I've been thinking about the mind of another president, Lyndon B. Johnson. I was 30 years old, a White House assistant working on politics and domestic policy. I watched and listened as LBJ made his fateful decisions about Vietnam. He had been thrust into office by the murder of President John F. Kennedy on November 22, 1963, 46 years ago this weekend. And within hours of taking the oath of office, LBJ was told that the situation in South Vietnam was far worse than he knew. Less than four weeks before Kennedy's death, the South Vietnamese president himself had been assassinated in a coup by his generals, a coup the Kennedy administration had encouraged. South Vietnam was in chaos. And even as President Johnson tried to calm our own grieving country, in those first weeks in office, he received one briefing after another about the deteriorating situation in Southeast Asia. Lyndon Johnson secretly recorded many of the phone calls and conversations he had in the White House. In this broadcast, you're going to hear excerpts that reveal how he wrestled over what to do in Vietnam. There are hours of tapes, and the audio quality is not the best. But I've chosen a few to give you an insight into the mind of one president facing the choice of whether or not to send more and more soldiers to fight in a faraway and strange place. Granted, Barack Obama is not Lyndon Johnson. Afghanistan is not Vietnam. And this is now, not then. But listen, and you will hear echoes and refrains that resonate today. Hello? Mr. Bundy, calling the president. Yes. Secretary McNamara. Hey, the president's Nine coming right on. Right. Hello? There were no Blackberries yes. or email then. Uh, Lyndon uh, Johnson relied on the telephone and seemed always to have at least one in hand. He consulted not just within the government, but far and wide with everyone on everything. Here in office a little over two months, with bad news arriving daily from Vietnam, he reaches out to commiserate with an old friend, the newspaper publisher, John Knight. Well, what do you think we ought to do in Vietnam? I never thought we belonged there. Well, that's a real tough one now, and I think President Kennedy uh, thought at one time we should never, that we were overcommitted in that area. Well, I posed it in 54, but we're there now, and we're only one of three things you can do. One is run and let the dominoes start falling over. And uh, God Almighty, what they said about us leaving China would just be warming up compared to what they'd say now. I see Nixon raising hell about it today, cool water too. Uh, you can run or you can fight, as we are doing, or you can uh, sit down and agree to neutralize all of it. Neutralizing South Vietnam would have meant an international agreement declaring the nation off limits to all outside influence, ending efforts by North Vietnam to reunite the two countries divided since 1954. But nobody's going to neutralize North Vietnam, so that's uh, totally impractical. And uh, so it really boils down to one or two decisions, getting out or getting in. Long range over there, the odds are certainly against us. Yes, no question about that. Any time you got that many people against you that far away from your own base, it's bad. LBJ shares the prevailing Cold War mentality that communism is an aggressive menace that, like today's war on terror, had to be opposed no matter what or where. That's why JFK had sent several thousand military advisors to South Vietnam. Like Kennedy, Johnson hopes to keep our presence there to a low profile. As Republicans like former Vice President Richard Nixon and presidential hopeful Barry Goldwater call for an escalation of military force in Vietnam, LBJ wants to keep the situation on hold while he struggles to figure out the options with Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara. I would say that we have a commitment to Vietnamese freedom. Now, we, uh, we could pull out of there, the dominoes would fall, and that part of the world would go to the communists. We could send our Marines in there, we could get tied down in the Third World War or another Korean action. 
The other alternative is to advise them and hope that they stand up and fight. Now, uh, this nation has made no commitment to go in there to, uh, to fight as yet. We're in there to train them and advise them. And uh, that's what we're doing. Nobody really understands what it is out there. They don't know, and they get to where they're confused. And they're asking questions, and they're saying, why, why don't we do more? Well, I think this. Uh, you, you can have more war, or you can have more appeasement. But we don't want more of either. But we do have a commitment to help the Vietnamese defend themselves. Johnson is about to send McNamara on a fact-finding mission to Saigon, the capital of South Vietnam. But some in the press interpret the trip as laying the groundwork for a vast land war in Asia. The president wants McNamara to knock those rumors down. Uh, I'd like for you to say that there are several courses that could be followed. We could send our own uh, divisions in there and our own Marines in there, and they could start attacking the Viet, the Viet Cong. And the results that would likely flow from that. Mm -hmm. uh, we could uh, come out of there and say we're willing to neutralize, let them uh, neutralize South Vietnam and let uh, the commies take North Vietnam. As soon as we get out, they could uh, swallow up South Vietnam, and that would go. We could uh, pull out and say, to hell with you, we're going to have Fortress America, we're going home. Or we can uh, say this is the Vietnamese War, and they've got 200,000 men, and they're untrained, and we've got to bring their morale up. And they have nothing really to fight for because of the type of government they've had. We can put in socially conscious people and try to get them to improve their, their own government, and the, what the people get out of their own government, we can train them how to fight. And that, uh, after considering all of these, it seems that uh, the latter offers the best alternative for America to follow. That same day, March 2nd, 1964, McNamara shares with Johnson an urgent memo from the Joint Chiefs of Staff, insisting that preventing the loss of South Vietnam was of overriding importance to the United States. Johnson says to some aides, don't they think I know that? That evening, he tests talking points he has devised with McNamara on one of his old colleagues, the influential chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. No matter what choice he makes, LBJ will need the support of J. William Fulbright. So uh, maybe we can, if we can just get our foreign policy straightened out. Now, of course, yeah, I get that damn Vietnam thing. Not any hope on that? That's the most difficult one, I think. I want to take one minute here to read you what I think is the best summary of it we have. We can withdraw from South Vietnam. Without our support, Vietnam will collapse, and the ripple effect will be felt throughout Southeast Asia endangering independent governments in Thailand, Malaysia, and extending as far as India on the west, Indonesia on the south, and the Philippines on the east. Number two, we can seek a formula that will neutralize South Vietnam, but any such formula will only lead in the end to the same results as withdrawing support. Three, we can send the Marines a la Goldwater, but if we do, our men may well be bogged down in a long war against numerically superior North Vietnamese and Chai Com forces 10,000 miles from home. Four, we continue our present policy of providing training and logistical support for the South Vietnam forces. This policy has not failed. We propose to continue it. Secretary McNamara's trip to South Vietnam will provide us with an opportunity to again appraise the future prospects of this policy and the further alternatives that may be available to us. I, I, exactly what I'd arrive at under these circumstances, at least for the foreseeable future. All right, now when he comes back, though, and and we're losing what we're doing. We've got to decide whether to send a man or whether to come out and let the dominoes fall. And that's where the tough one's going to be, and you do some heavy thinking. Do some heavy thinking. Let's decide what we do. The president meets with the Joint Chiefs to hear their arguments. What they say is disturbing. Their options are stark. He wants some middle ground, as he says in this call to his White House assistant for national security, Mike George Bundy, who had famously kept his cool at John Kennedy's side during the Cuban Missile Crisis. I spent a lot of time with Joint Chiefs. You ought to have been up here. I didn't think of it, but well, I, I was over to be private. Gun. They love to be private, Mr. President. All right. Well, anyway, remind me in the morning to go over all I would like to catch so up with you. Yes, sir. The, uh, the net of it is, though, that uh, they say get in and get out. Yeah. And I told them, uh, let's uh, try to find an amendment 
there will, uh, we haven't got any Congress that will go with us, and we haven't got any mothers that will go with us in the war. And uh, nine months, I'm just an inherited, I'm a trustee. I got a one election, or next and somebody else has. And then uh, uh, you can make a decision. But in the meantime, let's see if we can't find enough things to do to keep them off base and stop uh, these uh, shipments that are coming in uh, from Laos and pick a few selected targets to upset them a little bit without getting another Korean operation started. To stop supplies coming south from Hanoi through Laos, the president approved the secret bombing of the Ho Chi Minh Trail by mercenaries flying old American fighters. There's been another military coup in Saigon. 